this episode, we're going to have a look at playing some audio clips whenever you click on a link. So in this case, it's making a toot sound. And for this Rails application, I am using ES Build. So I'm going to add in the library with a yarn add, and it's called Fart. And we'll add in the library, and if we look under the node modules, under the Fart directory, you'll see that there's no audio clips. But if we look under the index.js, it simply just has it all in here as a base64. And there's a few different sounds and two different formats. And so I'm really annoying. So what I want to do within the JavaScript application.js is I want to make sure that this plays on any time you click any kind of link. So we'll import in and let's just use the MP3 version. And we'll import it in from fart. We can then do an event listener. So we'll do our document, add event listener. And this is going to be on our turbo load. And so I'm going to set a few different constants. And these are just going to be for our selectors. So whenever we have a link, or if we click on a button, then we're going to want to trigger the sound. So we can do a selectors for each, and we'll loop through each one of the selectors. And then we'll get our document, we'll get our query selector all, and we'll get it of that selector. And then we'll loop through each one of these. It'll be our element. And then for that element, we can add an event listener whenever they click on it. And we want to play some kind of audio. So this will be a function that we create. We'll just make it a constant play audio is equal to, and then we can get our constant audio is equal to a new audio resource. We can get our audio dot source, and we'll set this equal to, and we need to create another function called get random sound. Because we have an array of MP3 files, we just want to get a random one. And then we can call the audio.play. We can always catch if there is any kind of error. And we'll just console.log that error. And we'll just put in an error message. But for this random sound, again, we'll set a constant, get random sound. We'll set that equal to a function. And we need to get a random index. So our random index is going to be equal to the math.floor. And we want to get a math dot random and we want to set that equal to our mp3 and it's going to be the sound that's within that index.js within that library and we want to get the length meaning that we want to know how many items are in that array and the math dot floor will just make sure that we are getting a whole number instead of a decimal and so we can return the mp3 dot prefix which is the base 64 part of the string and the mp3.sound, which is our list of base64 sounds and the random index. We can then join these together with an empty string, and that should be good. And so this is all we have to do. We can load up our application with a bin dev, and then we can come to one of the pages and click on the link, and it makes a toot sound. And so as a final thought, if you did want to take something serious away from this, in preparations for this episode, it was actually kind of difficult. Because several years ago, I remember coming across this JavaScript library, and I thought how fun it would be to make an episode on it. However, instead of just downloading this and using it, I went to the GitHub page, and I saw that this project was archived. The last commit on it was 10 years ago, and while there isn't much going on in this actual library, it is a risk to be bringing in very, very old libraries within our application. And for something as simple as this kind of library, I probably would have just copied the source code and brought it directly into my application if it's something that wasn't ever going to change. You would want to make sure that you copy the applicable copyright notices and put those in as well, and make sure that the license allows you to do something like that. But it is a risk within your application to be bringing in libraries that are very old. And even ones that were not old when you initially brought it in, it's good to audit those periodically because I did recently come across a situation like that. For a long time, to identify college or university email addresses, I was using the SWAT gym. It was a good gym for many years, but I started to get a few more and more requests saying that their school email wasn't giving them the discount. And so I decided to investigate it a bit and I came to the project and realized that the SWAT gym had been archived a few years prior. 
And so I saw that as a big risk. So that's when I basically created my own fork, updated the code so it's more modern, and I'm now sourcing a list that is being updated. So I've essentially taken over the SWAT gem, keeping it up to date, and I've been doing regular releases, making sure that it's always kept up to date. So the main takeaway here is you should do an audit of your gems and packages that you're using and making sure that they are up to date and there's no outstanding issues that could be a potential liability within your own application. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.